Earthquake at this point sits on Hogan's face and says, "Lick my balls." That's not what happens. It's he does pretty the, much. He does the earthquake. Uh, the uh, the yeah the earthquake splash. And you notice in the promo he just started bouncing around. He always does. It's just like it's just like. <laughs> can do it. Do you. can you imagine like nailing the mountain, nailing Coco Beware with pogs? Oh, that'd be awesome. Flicking Just like up. flicking him at yeah, yeah. And Coco Beware's like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Flapping up. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and a very warm welcome back to the Gimme a Holy Air Wrestling Podcast. My name is Dom, and this is. Ant. All right, we're dominant, as in dominant, because that's what we thought we'd call this thing the first time round. We already said that like five podcasts ago, but here we go. Like see. Ant and Deck. Let's get ready, ready, let's get ready, ready, let's, let's get, get ready, ready to rumble. rumble. Get yeah, ready, yeah, yeah, steady, and rumble. Everybody rumble. That was a, yeah. a British band in the a band. early 90s. More like a pop. More like, like a, pop a pop load of phenomenon. shite, which phenomenon. is uh, appropriate song, really, because we're going into the Royal Rumble from 1991, 19, um, yes. Miami Arena in Florida. Go into Miami. I was going to break. Go into, into Miami. Will Smith, right? Is that Will Smith? Go Jesus into Smith. Miami. Yeah, Will Jesus. Smith's a legend. Gee, Will Smith is a legend. Will Smith. Yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit about today. The main feud on the card was the Ultimate Warriors feud with Sergeant Slaughter. Which, yeah, which is which is which born out of this whole na- this whole um, Iraqi sympathizer gimmick, which is Absolutely. going on. Like, it was kind of kind of rubbish. Like I was just like, Nah, man, this ain't good. No, it's just boring as no. well. Well, not boring more. Well, it was inappropriate. Yeah, and it's it got a lot of attention at the time. Yeah. And the Two days before the Royal Rumble was when Operation Desert Storm started, which was the Gulf War, yeah. and this was two days before the Rumble. So this is a very patriotic yeah. episode. I think what of the I meant Rumble. to say was like Sergeant Slaughter as a character kind of bores me a little bit, and he was the wrong person. His, his wrestling is very boring. The wrong person to do this, and it was a wrong. Gi- it was a wrong gimmick anyway. Yeah. Um, probably one of the worst uh, placed. Um, next to Mohammed Hassan and a few others, all racially motivated. Yeah, um, I think uh, Mohammed uh, Hassan was actually worse than this, but we'll get was, back into that in yeah, in many years time. Many years time. Um, but uh, but yeah, no, it was was really bad. And I mean, the way they did this was clever in terms of having a match. You know, because in the middle of the card, you've got. Um, Got Warrior out there, and you got Sherry involved. You know, just kind of, kind of. Well, that's the other thing about this pay per view. There's a great promo between Ultimate Warrior and Sensational Sherry, which I can't wait to talk about because if you yeah. actually watch it and and watch what the crowd are chanting, it's freaking hilarious. Yeah, there's, yeah there's and some... uh, yeah, it also debuts a star from WWE who is still wrestling today. So, are you looking forward to talking about this one? I am. Looking Let's forward to talking about do this it, one. man. Uh, stick with us for the full Rumble review as well, of course. And uh, please like the video, comment down below, subscribe. Let us know what you think, what you agree with, what you don't agree with. Yeah. Check us out on Facebook where we've been posting more and more live videos of, yeah. of, uh, of more present-day reviews and stuff like that. So uh, do check us out on Facebook. Give me a whole um, yeah. Give me a whole yeah. Um, so, yeah. We, uh, so the show starts off with the national anthem. Again, oh. very patriotic, this, yes. this one. Very patriotic, even more so than usual, due to what was happening in Iraq, obviously. Uh, are we at a rundown of the Rumble Park? Excuse me. You're right. I burnt. Oh, 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 yeah, it's out. All right, all right, love. All right, all right, all right. right. That's like abuse now. You're feeling better. Yeah, I'm feeling better, yeah. Yeah, much better. Thanks for beating me. Uh, a rundown of the participants in the Rumble. Um, yeah, the Im- image of Jimmy Snooker from this this certain point looked like he was stunned in the ring. His eyes were like, yeah, J- ooh. Yeah. He looked, bless him, he, he looked like, like that quite a lot at this point. Yeah, he did, he was, probably because he was, he was stoned quite, most of the time. Quite high a lot of the time. Um, so the commentators are Gorilla Monsoon and Roddy Piper. Roddy Piper mumbled something at the start about supporting the troops. Didn't the, really get the more, what he the said. More I, the more I hear them together... Gorilla and Roddy, the more I'm down with it, the more I dig it, the better I think they get. They're not right. great. It's not a great combo. No, it's no. better than McMahon. It is, yeah. Uh, and yeah. it's better than a few other people yeah. that we've had. A Gorilla Monsoon's one-offs. good, and Gorilla, Gorilla Monsoon yeah, Gorilla's, really helps. Gorilla's the, the Michael Cole of the time, you know, just, just solid. Yeah, yeah, Really yeah. solid. Really solid. Um, although I miss the days when wrestlers 
were commentators that I think it makes you a much more well rounded you know Grillo was a great wrestler in his time well, they occasionally have you people forget, people um, forget this because obviously it overshadowed his wrestling career but Grillo was an yeah, incredible wrestler he was yeah um, back in the 70s you know, yeah and, and, and I do miss those days and we have criticised Roddy Piper for his commentary but there were you know Jesse Ventura there was good moments um, in it you know there's good you know always good moments I think when you have a wrestler look at look at uh, Corey Graves these days I think we've talked about that before you know I think it's nice to have a wrestler that that can appreciate the game yes that, that, that can go into commentary yeah, yeah but Roddy sometimes didn't have a filter to know no. when to put that out his and excitement, when not his to. wrestling persona was was very much injected into his commentary yep and you can't really do that no nope. Savage was also guilty of that but there were such large personalities yep how could you how could you not you know I agree um, so the first match was the Rockers versus uh, the Orient Express. So Marty Jannetty and Shawn Michaels both versus of, Kata and Tanaka with Mr. Fuji. Both of these teams, man. I got a lot of time for. I mean, I got a lot wow. of time for the Orient Express. Well, um, the Orient Express. I didn't until this pay per view, yeah. and this is an outstanding, mm. one of the best tag team matches that has happened yeah. in the WWF of all time. Um, this is in the same sort of category as the Steamboat Savage match. Yeah. This is an outstanding match yeah. to go back and watch, so but, do go back and, and watch And again, it. I think it proves our theory that Gennetti is the 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 gold. Oh, he was, the yeah. gold yeah. in this team. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, um, the, the, the two had, had, a, had a bit of... So I'm going to talk a little bit about Kato. Kato was the replacement for Sata yeah. um, for the Orient Express. This is the guy that was wearing a mask during the thing. If you remember, Orient Express had Sato in it before. I did do a little bit of research on Kaito, so as we like to do in the podcast, if we come over a new wrestler who's making his pay-per-view debut, we like to talk a little bit about him, find out his background. So here's a little bit about Kaito. His real name was Paul Diamond, and he was the masked one replacing Sato. He'd worked with Tanaka in the tag team Bad Company, formed in the CWA. Um, this was in uh, mid-80s. Yeah. Um, and he'd also worked in the AWA as as bad company with Tanaka as well. He was a soccer player turned wrestler, playing goalkeeper for the Calgary Bloom- Boomers. Calgary a, Boomers? Yeah, which is apparently a soccer team. Yeah. I don't think soccer's a big thing in America, is it? Not compared uh, to football. It's got a lot bigger recently. Has it? Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, these days, I don't think it was anywhere. Um, in his early career, he formed a team, the American Breed, with Shawn Michaels. So in Shawn Michaels' very early career, he was actually wrestling with Kato. And you could see the chemistry in the ring. You really could. All four of these men worked great together. Mm. During the time in the AWA, the first feud they had was against the Midnight Rockers, who became the Rockers, so Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty, who they took the AWA Tag Championship off. Um, so again, this is another case where WWF have played on a previous territory f- feud and brought it to the WWF because there's less story that needs mm. to be told. It can just sort of happen. And people know about it, certainly people that enjoy them territories um it, it'd be a bit a bit like putting AJ Styles with Finn Balor or AJ Styles with Shinsuke Nakamura yeah. nowadays we know about the history of the Bullet Club and Japan and every and AJ's relationship with the Shinsuke chemi- and Japan just the overall chemistry so WWF still play on that these days still take out uh Samoa Joe is another mm-hmm. another good example um so after Tanaka left in 1992 he had a brief solo run as Max Moon you remember Max Moon? Yes. Yeah. He had a, it's best if you guys don't. Did you know that he was on the very first um, Monday Night Raw in an yeah. Intercontinental yep. Championship match against Shawn Michaels? Yep. There you go. There's Mad Moon. Um, he went to ECW in 93 and 94 and reformed Bad Company with Tanaka. Yeah. 93 94, that was before it became Extreme Championship. Yeah. This was still Eastern yeah, Championship Eastern wrestling, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and then he was in WCW in 1994. Like... I would have sort of avoided going into him, really, because he sort of hasn't had a massive sort of legacy in wrestling. But because of the legacy of this match, it's important to go into him. So let's talk a little bit about the match. As expected, we get excellent double team moves from the Rockers and the crowd get hyped up. The crowd were incredible in this pay-per-view. One of the best crowds we've had so far in the pay-per-views. Really going for it. I think there was certainly a lot of USA patronism and a lot of standing together. <laughs> but because of that, the uh, Orient Express were the foreign heel team. Yeah. Rockers were the USA team. And they were so supportive. Yeah, and massive. that made the match excellent. Oh, huge. Yeah. Um, the crowd were chanting very loud USA chants. A lot of patronism in the room. 
Patreon. Um, talking about Patreonism, let's talk about Patron. If you want to support Nicely us, done. thanks, man. I wrote that one Nicely down. Nicely done. If you want to support us on Patreon, go ahead and find us or give me a whole year, and it'd be great to see some support. Um, Thank so you. So, in the um, if you want to, if you can, you know, that'd be cool. Anything, every little helps. As Absolutely. They say. As Asda say. As Asda say, yeah. Um, we're ripping off Asda now. <laughs> ripping off Vince McMahon's WWE and now Asda. Uh, Janetta Elite Frogs, one of the Orient Express, leading them to taking down each other. Really nice ring work. Yeah. Really nice uh, ring really coordination. Shy. I, I, like, honestly, one of my, you know, I think we, did we, we bought up Janetta in the Rockers, haven't we? We've bought up his underratedness. It, it, I just, How can you not? It was I, great. I, I, I just wonder. Sometimes I just wonder what could what Janae could, could have, have achieved been. and I and I always think you know was it down to his look did he just not look as as as, I think as just, rock and roll and as cool as Michael's but I just think man he, he just had so much ring. talent so much talent and if he was given as many opportunities no doubt he would have he would have he, he would have he could have been as big as Sean yeah absolutely um, all four of them have some really nice wrestling in the ring at, at, at points. Michael gets a sleeper hold on both Janetti and the other Orient Express come into support. Obviously, it's the Orient Express who gets the axe handles onto Michael's, giving them the advantage for a while. An incredible exchange at this point with all four in the ring, with attempts to Irish rips, reversals of atomic drops, drop creaks and higher cross bodies, yeah. all happening at the same time. Incredible. And that's what the Rockers did great, working in tandem and that sort of tandem tag team wrestling. And, and also Orient Express, again, really solid, uh, great on a technical level as well. Yes, absolutely. done. Absolutely. A great move, speaking of how good Orient Express were, were a great move from Orient Express when uh, he drops onto a top rope with the other one pulling from the apron mm. to add to the leverage. Really great show that these two know what they're doing together. Um, and then there was a great example of rest holds. Like, rest holds do have a place mm. in wrestling. Rest holds don't it's, it's have to just be building, a boring. It's about building pace and tone to the, the match. The crowd was so behind the USA chants and the rockers. The, the rest holds worked really mm -hmm. nicely really in this good. match. Great selling from Michaels, as always, as the Orient Express super kick from the apron onto Michael, who is also on the apron. Um, but what this did is, instead of it sending him out of the ring, he, he managed to get into the ring, into his next spot. But it actually looked natural. It didn't look like a super kick from an apron to someone else on another on, on the apron. Yeah. Could look really awkward to go in the ring, and somehow Michaels made it work yeah, yeah. beautifully. Man. He just flails about, doesn't he? He does, yeah. He just flails, and it seems to. And it just works, yeah, it man. Really, it works. Really, it's great. great. Uh, the Orient Express tried to use the belts to attack Michaels, but Michael dives on top of it, sending the Orient Express into uh, falling into yeah, each other. Yeah, yeah. Great little moment. Great little moment. Jeanette is about to throw Michaels off the top rope, but the Express interfere, leaving Michaels to fall. So he's got him held up on the yeah. off the top rope. Michaels falls right the way down to the floor. Again, great spot. Could have got hurt, but you yeah. know that's what wrestling's about as well, isn't it? It's about uh, creating the creating creating showmanship, and showmanship. Michaels Michaels understood that better than anybody. And Janetti and mm -hmm. the Orient Express did a wonderful job in in everything that we were doing at this point. Um, countering the Orient Express double team moves leads to Janetti taking the pin. Wow. Excellent match, exciting match, great work from all, um, yeah. and it's a really good one to go back and watch. So and I really suggest the Rockers you do. got a rare win as well. You know what I mean? I think that's yeah. important. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's nice. They don't win that much at this point. They have put on great showings, but they they uh, they don't really get the win. Too no, often. I'm not a massive fan of. Um, I'm not a massive fan of, of tag team wrestling in general. Like, I can't think of many classics of tag team wrestling. Really, I like the attitude here with the Hardy Boys and the Dudleys and Edge and Christian. Um, I'm not a massive fan of tag team wrestling, and there's one match I think that was better than this that happened just recently, and it's possibly gonna, one of my favourites. You're going to say DIY and, and you're going to say DIY. No, that was good though. The that was DIY that was also was really a pain good. in the final. The final. No, I was actually thinking Hell in a Cell, man. New Day and Usos who put on and it's and again that was the opening match of the show in a similar vein to this one. That made and me it respect. Was that made me respect the Usos. That gave, that made me. It gave me even more respect for New yeah, Day yeah, yeah, than, really, than I already had. Yeah. So, you know, they really told some great storytelling, and and that's how good this match is. So go back and watch it. The Savage and Steamboat of tag team wrestling. I yeah, said that earlier, amazing. but I wrote it down there, so I Incredible. want to say it again. Uh, next up, we have an interview with Macho Man. Yeah, no. Macho Macho Man. Really he says he wants Warren and he sent Sherry out to bait him into a match. Yeah, very. She did very, more than bait him. Yes, yes she did. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I, you know what? And I'm, I'm not really a big fan of when you do this on the podcast, but you know, I mean, if 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 Sherry wanted to bait me 
in the way you know I, I'd, be, I'd be down with that she's very she's a very talented woman how 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 can you degrade women like that you're just disgusting I know, double you standards, disgrace me I, absolutely double standards I'm just saying she, I can't believe you just this is a wrestling show we, we talk about <laughs> men in pants alright I, I do I do this to him all the time really <laughs> so, but I just realised I was doing the same thing so. yeah you were uh, no I, I just I'm, I'm just I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Sherry's work yeah alright I'm a fan of her in ring work I'm a fan of her baiting the warrior um, the, 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 the fans were also a fan the fans, the fans were, were a fan the segment the fans were fans, fans were of of uh, of, uh, of Sherry Bates and the Warrior too. Would you like to expand? <laughs> I will. Uh, so we see Sherry enter the interview area in the auditorium. Sherry looked great as she always did. Uh, mm-hmm. So she says that Sergeant Slaughter's promised Macho Man a championship match, and Sherry wants some for the same for the Warrior from the Warrior. Sorry, Sherry wants the same from the Warrior. She wants the Warrior to say, "I'll have a title match after I win the title." Um, if he's as brave as everyone thinks he is, he will come out. Um, so there's already a, a bit of a bit of temptation. A bit of, a bit there. of temptation. 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 Yeah. Higher and higher. Temptation. <laughs> uh, so Warrior comes out and he won't answer Sherry and she starts flirting with him. This is brilliant work from Sherry. Absolutely hilarious. Um, she's always admired Warrior and her lips and she gives Warrior a kiss on the lips and he starts... Oh. <laughs> it's funny. And then she starts touching his t- chest and stripping off his jacket. Excellent. And um, the crowd start chanting "slapper, slapper, slapper, slapper" to the warrior, yeah. uh, which was hilarious. She goes to kiss the warrior and he smiles awkwardly. <laughs> <laughs> I love this segment, man. Um, so she <laughs> we'll gets... find it and post it on the Facebook wall. Here. <laughs> she gets down on her knees in front of the warrior um, <laughs> to beg him a little bit more. I-, I think this was done innocently, but with all the sort of uh, flirting that had happened, the crowd start chanting in its first few rows, and you can't hear it audibly, but you can see what exactly what they're saying. Give him head, give him head, give him head. <laughs> like how, how, I don't know how she kept a call, but it was absolutely brilliant, absolutely great work from Sherry Martel, and hilarious, absolutely hilarious. Um, yeah, um, he replies, no. <laughs> Which is apparently what he did after she'd give him. Um, <laughs> then the uh, Macho Man comes out and he's irate with Warrior, so he starts. Uh, he goes in, but Warrior's already gone. And the the crowd, the front row, of the crowd again, great, just start chanting, "Asshole, asshole, asshole!" <laughs> great segment, man. Love it. Yeah. Love wrestling. Um, <laughs> so next match we have Big Boss Man versus the Barbarian with Bobby Heenan. Yeah. 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 No, Shame. We've had a great match yeah. and a great promo, this, and now the pay per view. This wasn't starts so. To, yeah. This wasn't so great. Uh, no. Bossman, you know, consummate kind of face as he was at this time, looked pretty strong, as strong as you can against a guy who's as weak as. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a huge fan. I just wasn't a huge fan of this match on the whole. No, I'm not um, a huge fan of Barbarian. No. There's a nice clothesline at the beginning that sends both of them over the top rope. Bossman gets foot caught in the rope for Barbarian yeah. to attack. There was, Barbarian just lumbered about. He yeah, did, I mean, yeah. I mean, that was he did. probably part of his gimmick, but it just didn't really appeal. No. You know, to a lot of people, nobody really got Barbarian. What I didn't get about this match is Bossman was clearly calling the match. Like, you could yeah. see him mouthing stuff. And there was a part where he was in a bear hug, and the bear hug lasted forever. And um, he was... You could see him talking to Barbarian, telling him what to do next. And it's like, well, what else is he going to do? You need. To, he just yeah. needs to hold on to you, and you need to sell it. And it, and it just, I just didn't get it at all. Yeah. Um, and the other thing was, Bossman in a bear hug from the Barbarian doesn't really work because Bossman was a big bloke as yeah. well. Yeah. So it's not like you can sort of swash him around. Yeah. Bear hugs work with big blokes. Yeah, it didn't. You know? really, the the, con, the the concept of this would have been a bit like putting Lesnar in a bear hug from Strowman. Like you know, it's a bit like yeah, it's it is. You know, it's sort of kind of pointless. Yeah, but, um, Strowman put in. Finn Balor in yes. a bear hug, fine. Yes. You know, not not Brock Lesnar. It's gonna get a bit boring really quickly, isn't it? Um, and it did, it, it, especially after the last match. Uh, Bossman nearly gets a pin after the slam, but Barbarian gets his hands onto the rope. Bossman reverses a high cross body from the Barbarian for the pin. 
The crowd seemed into it. I just don't think it's that great a match to go and nah, watch. Nah. I found it way too simple. Especially and it's, and it's the two guys, there wasn't enough of a, of a dynamic. They weren't dynamic no. performers. In order to were, a, but Bossman was a dynamic performer. Yeah, yeah, but in order to create a good match, you've got to have you know, you've got to have, you know, a little bit of the charisma and I'm not sure that either of them worked on how well barbarians certainly it didn't, didn't work on this boss level. Man, boss Bossman had great moments in boss the man future. had great moments in the future, yeah. Yeah. So um then we have an interview with Slaughter and General Adnan. Um if you think that I can't do Slaughter, do Slaughter. Yeah. Maggots. Maggots, <laughs> yeah. Um, <coughs> uh, if you think there's turmoil in the world today, you wait until I enter the ring against the Warrior. And then we have an interview with Warrior, which almost made sense, actually. Mm, I was quite it shocked. Was, it was, I mean, it, it still didn't make a lot of sense. No, no. Uh, he won't take orders from Sergeant Slaughter. That was fair enough. You know, it, it, it was audible. I could hear it. For it was once. Okay. Uh, can, Gorilla at this point confirms that the views of Sergeant Slaughter do not represent the views of the World Wrestling Federation. I mean, that's like it legitimizes his villainy. Yeah, but it's like but, saying, look, the WWF came up with that story yeah, for Slaughter. The yeah, WWF yeah. were writing that script. Yeah. yeah. Right? It then makes no sense for them to say that they don't represent the views of the World well, Wrestling Federation. Well, it creates heat, though, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, it it does. But it also... I think it's more about saving face for the company in case there was any major backlash. Yeah. Um, yeah, anyway. So the next match is the World Championship, World Wrestling Federation Championship match. Sergeant Slaughter and General Adnan versus the Ultimate Warrior. Yeah. Prior to this match, Dom, did you know, as part of the build-up to this match... Sergeant Slaughter received a gift from Saddam Hussein. Yeah, that, which was that, a pair of wrestling boots. Yeah, there was yeah. A, there was meant to be a yeah yeah. That's highly inappropriate, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And Not there was great. a lot of signs, weren't there, to the, to that kind of um, you know warrior destroy Slaughter and Hussein, and, mm. and, and and Piper did the same thing as well on commentary. They were very anti Slaughter and and Hussein, as if they were. Bedfellows, so to speak. Yeah. Um, as if they were best mates. Which would mean, um, obviously, Slaughter would never win the match. Yeah. Because that would make no sense, would it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I saw this match on the card, and at first I wasn't looking forward to it, to be honest. Slaughter in the Survivor Series <laughs> bored the hell out of me. I'm not, a, yeah. Um, not a great not a great wrestler. And how the hell was he going to work with Warrior? Mm-hmm. I don't think the match was actually that bad, and I thought... It, the the booking was quite mm. good as well. Um, so uh, uh, General Adan and Slaughter tried to attack uh, with the Iraqi flag from the start. Warrior does a double clothesline and rips up the flag, stuffs it into Sergeant Slaughter's mag, uh, mouth. Yeah. So we have the whole, hey, America, yeah. Uh, Warrior didn't do a bad job at the start of the match, and Slaughter is selling as well, mm-hmm. which is good. Mm-hmm. Um, Sherry comes out after Slaughter is thrown over the top rope and holds Warrior's legs whilst he's running into the ropes. Warrior runs out to go get Sherry up the ramp. Um, yes, so yeah. he goes out as soon as he gets to the top of the ramp. Who's waiting for him? Good old, good old Macho Man. Macho the Man. Ma- Randy macho Savage King. is waiting for him and he attacks him with a light as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and leaves him sort of dead on the floor. Obviously, Warrior starts getting counted out at this point, and Slaughter says to the referee, distracts the referee to stop him from counting him out because he wants to have the match. So we have the whole crowd building up to Warrior running back into the ring. And it it was a good segment, yeah, man. I mean, it, it built up that Warrior match. Very steady, feud. but it was really good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like I say, like yeah. it was a steady build up. And, and That's uh, what I mean. You weren't going to put these two and have a have a wrestling match like we'd seen with Michaels and Thingy, but if you tell the story in the ring, it can work out okay. And they did. They did. Um, yeah, the crowd, the crowd were cheering USA for the Warrior. Now this is when the match starts to get a bit slow again as, as Slaughter takes the lead. Um, a double close line ends up taking both men out. So we, we see both men getting the count. Uh, Warrior ends up s- slamming Slaughter but sells that his back's in pain from a previous move and yeah. from uh, the Macho Man attacking him. Slaughter gets Warrior in the camel clutch at one point mm-hmm. which um, should be a finish at that point. But his feet were obviously outside the ring like they were yeah. hanging over the apron. And the ref, for whatever reason, didn't spot it for ages and then eventually spots it and it's, you know, the crowd were getting, yeah. Yeah, it was, it, like I say, some good moments. Some not some so good not moments. Some not so good no. moments, yeah. um, Warrior hooks up, beating Slaughter, but then Sherry comes out with a spectre. Is that what you call it? Scepter. Scepter, not the, spectre. The royal scepter. What's a, what's a spectre? 
a spectre. It's like a ghost. Ooh. Yeah. Can you imagine if she came out with a ghost? The great spectre. The great spectre. <gasps> no, she comes out with a scepter. Um, Sherry gets dragged into the ring. Warrior goes for the splash, but Macho comes out and Warrior throws Sherry over the top rope into Macho Man's arms. Again, great mm. moment. While he's distracted, though, um, Slaughter starts to get a little bit of an advantage. And he, what he does is he sort of does his knee yeah, the, move. Yeah, the, 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 the clip. Yeah, um, he, he puts his back of his knee into a warrior. Warrior ends up outside the rope. Macho Man grabs the scepter and thumps yeah. uh, Warrior with it. Now, it was a pretty hard hit, and it actually busts open Warrior. Yeah. There's... Um, visible blood on the ring from his hands and it, so it was right on the square of his head as well it was pretty mm. nasty man um yeah there was beads flying off it's a great great image and it's a great setup to the feud for Macho and warrior to come on um yeah new champion sergeant slaughter the crowd ch- start chanting bullshit yeah with the ridiculous the ridiculous elbow the the, the bloody sergeant that sergeant slaughter's moves that's just so, so shit yeah i know it is yeah so mm. shit um, yeah but yeah I thought it was okay. I thought it was booked well, and for what what this match could have been I, I with these two. I remember it being cool. iconic in terms of the, just how hot, how horrifying the angle was. Like it's one of those things that even though I wasn't watching wrestling at the time, I went back and watched this because people talked about it so much because of the atrocious angle, and because you know it's 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 billed as a classic in a lot of ways because it was America versus you yeah. know yeah. this 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 outside force, and it yeah. was so poignant. <clears throat> Politic, the, well, politically at the time. It was. Um, after this match, Warrior had gone to have a series of matches with Randy Savage. Uh, the first one was in a mm-hmm. steel cage, I think, um, which Savage won a lot of until we get to WrestleMania 7, uh, which was a career versus career yes. match. And we'll be reviewing that in the next I yeah, episode. Yeah, I can't wait for that. It's a good match, man. Um, Hogan was named number one contender in the lead-up to WrestleMania with him facing off against Slaughter. So that's sort of the future of what happened mm-hmm. with this uh Feud. Well, there's kind of spoilers there. For... Spoilers. Spoilers. Spoilers from the 90s. Yes, indeed. It's a bit like saying the Titanic. A spoiler at the end, it sank. It's a pretty bleak way to, to, to move on with the podcast there, Anthony. Next match, we have Coco Beware versus the Mountie with Jimmy Hart. So this is the first time we've seen the Mountie gimmick. The Mountie yeah. was Jacques Rougeau. Of the Rougeau brothers, his brother, what was his brother? Raymond, Raymond yeah. Rougeau. He'd uh, retired from in-ring wrestling. He'd become backstage. Still works with the WWF yeah. on the commentary team for the French. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, allowance the table. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I was like, this was this was the Mountie gimmick. Well, that lasted quite a while. It does. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, surprisingly enough, um, but it did. And then the the Quebecers it's the came. It's a cartoon area. Yeah, the, the, the Quebecers came. came out of that. But yeah. um, you know, it wasn't it wasn't bad. In terms of its longevity, the gimmick itself, meh. It was a, it was a cartoon gimmick. But let's but we're, just we're let's just celebrate the fact era. that Coco Beware is back on uh, wrestling pay per views. He was in the last wrestling pay per view. I just I just like I'm really excited. He had a to really see, good match uh, against um, a really good showing against the Undertaker I'm in really, Survivor Series. I'm really excited to see the future of Coco Beware on on wrestling pay per views. Are you? It's important. It's, it's important. It is important. It is important. The Undertaker and Coco Beware. Yeah, man. At Survivor Series. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. We talked about that, didn't we? And he yeah, got the he's the first he's person, the first person to take the tombstone. tombstone, yeah. That's pretty. That's a pretty good nod to Coco Beware. It was the height of his career. Yeah, but no, in terms of a good performance, though. He was all right, yeah. He was all right. I mean, this this, this match ain't great, but... Um... Coco Beware returns and does... He flaps up. He, does he his flaps flap. up. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Honestly, it's, a be- it's like a better alternative to the Hulk, Hulk up. It's the flap up. <laughs> <laughs> he flaps up. You know? You're right. He does. Yeah, I he love does. it. I love he it. He does. It's brilliant. I've got a lot of time for go. Did we went. We didn't. We didn't make our our underrated list, did he? But we no, did. I'm sure. No. Did we give him an honorable mention? No. <laughs> Shit. Well, Coco Beware. I still think. He, still think he was great. I don't think. I don't know if that list has been in, uh, released yet. It might not oh, have been released shit. at this point. Well, it's Coco coming. Beware isn't on it. Yes, yeah, so we might be doing an underrated list. Let us know we if you want to an, see we that. We are doing an underrated We've list. already done it. But let us know it. anyway. Uh, <laughs> if you don't want to see it, it's thanks tough. for playing along, dude. Tough. <laughs> tough. Um, so he left WWF for a year. Did Jacques R- R- Rougeau um, and reappeared as the Mountie, who he'd often use a cattle prod in the ring. That was sort of his gimmick. Mounties didn't have cattle prods. Didn't they? No. It's really weird. That, I think uh, Roddy Piper makes a point of that as well. Well, that's a good point. Yeah. 
I don't know what mountains have. I'm not. I've never right, been do, to Canada. Like, let me let me just get because I just I don't want to be completely wrong. No, no, it's fine. You, you check. Factually incorrect. Mounties. Did you know that there was a whole litigation with case with the Mountie? So cattle prods. When he performed the gimmick in Canada, he wasn't allowed to wear like he wasn't allowed to be announced as the Mountie. Purely, purely a Mountie thing. Purely a Mountie WWE thing. You know, it's the only time you you see a. Uh, the only time you ever see a Mountie with a cattle prod is, is in the is WWF. In, uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, there you go, Jack. Yeah, Jack yeah. Rousseau, cattle prod. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there was a whole litigation case with the Mountie. Basically, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police didn't like the character. Um, so when he went to Canada, he wasn't allowed to perform the Mountie gimmick. He'd have to wear like just a plain red shirt and play red hands, and he'd never be announced as the Mountie. And the commentary team would even say during the matches that this man does not represent the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. There you go. Um, so yeah. When the troops come home, Roddy Piper's going to buy them a big glass of skimmed milk. Yeah, that was, that was or, so, or something stronger. No, no, no. He did say skimmed skim milk. He said something stronger as well. Did he? Uh, yeah, he said awesome. Uh, what, like, like whole milk? Yeah, like whole milk. Is that, is that stronger? Probably. Mental. Ac- according to Roddy Piper, maybe that's why, uh, you know, maybe that's why he was so strong of will. <laughs> because of all, of all his skimmed all the milk. milk. Yeah, skimmed milk. Um, so the Mountie nails Coco with a cattle pog outside the ring. Cattle really pog. Cattle prod. What did I say? Cattle pog. Oh man, I'm not feeling very well. <laughs> you pogs? Pogs? Yeah. What, like the little yeah. circular discs that you yeah. used to play? Yeah, I do, yeah. Can you imagine like nailing the Mountie, nailing Coco Beware with pogs? Oh, that'd be awesome. Flicking Just like flicking them at yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. And Coco Beware's like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Flapping up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be good, man. Does anyone that'd else remember Pogs? Yeah, Pogs, Showing man. our Classic. age, man. Classic. Does anyone else remember Pogs? Classic. Comment and, and tell us <laughs> about your Pog memories in the comment section. <laughs> oh, brilliant, man. Brilliant. Um, yeah, the crowd have died off a little bit at this point in the match. It's a little boring. Coco hooks up. <laughs> Sorry, what, what does what he do? do? He flaps up. up. Very good. <laughs> uh, yeah, really, really crap bit where Jimmy Hart distracts Coco. Coco's constantly keeps looking behind to see the reversal that Mountie was going to... Because Jimmy Hart distracts him on the ring and Coco Beware's like, oh, I'm distracted. <laughs> right, when's he going to hit me with my axe handle? Oh, he's doing it now. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, uh, wrestling. Um, uh, respect to Coco Beware for giving us so much inspiration. <laughs> for Mount he, and Mount he does a slam, gets a pin. Oh, yeah, the bo- it was like a boss man slam. Totally it was a boss that man one. Yeah, totally, totally ripped, ripped it off. off the boss, boss man. man. Yep. Uh, next up, we had an interview with Macho. Sherry was pulling faces behind him. I love, I love wrestlers pulling faces behind him. <laughs> for no reason whatsoever um, interviewer suggests Warrior would still be champion if it wasn't for Savage mm-hmm. then we have an interview with Slaughter Slaughter about how he took the championship yeah, from celebrates the with Adnan yeah and yeah. Adnan does the, the kind of chant and, uh, yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah kind, he's kind of awkward blah, 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 blah. kind of awkward yeah, yeah. Very, very awkward Ox. Thank God the one at war. Oh, the where. Um, interview with people on the street, sending love out to the troops. This is quite a nice little segment yeah. for WWF to actually do this. Yeah. But then at the same time, there was sort of kicking the fans back in the teeth by doing such an inappropriate storyline yeah. at the same time. I think they maybe put this in after the, you know, they maybe put this in to balance it out. Probably, yeah. 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 There's a promo with the wrestlers for the Rumble. No, man, this, this made me laugh. Um, so... First of all, it's with Jake, and he's talking about getting to Martel, so their feud's continuing that we saw at Survivor Series. This leads to a, a really good match at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. I can't wait for you to watch this match, actually, and talk about it. Have you seen the blindfold match mm-hmm. with Rick Martel? I've seen it, but yeah, yeah. Shake the Snake is one of your favourite wrestlers. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Um, so then we get an interview with Earthquake, Greg Valentine, Texas Tornado, Kerry Von Erich, Legion of Doom... Um, I didn't get what Legion of Doom said. If if life is like a roller coaster, then you don't want to ride us. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, <laughs> that was it. And then like the, the, obviously the classic. Rush. What was that all about? I don't know, I don't know. If life is like a roller coaster, <laughs> you don't want to ride us. Well, well, people would definitely want to ride us if we were like a roller coaster. <laughs> It's like a freaking boyzone song or some crap. We, man. we 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 are we are very. I think we're very rideable. I think people want to ride along with the Gimme a Holy Air Wrestling oh, podcast. You made a, do you want to ride along with us? We could do a video in a car and we could like stop and 
it'd be boring. Yeah. <laughs> what? Like, I'm, I'm talking about WWF ride along. Oh, ride right along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. WWF reference, and you didn't even realise. Um, so next up, we have promos with Undertaker. Rest in pieces. I think yeah. he said. Yeah, he said uh, uh, resting. Uh, you, uh, are, you will be resting. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. Peace. He said re- he says resting yeah. in peace. Yeah. Uh, Hacksaw oh, Jim Duggan. It's, uh, your, it's your twin. Thanks, mate. Uh, my girlfriend thinks I look more like Rick Martel. I, I tell you, actually, Rick Martel's body looked incredible at this mm. point. He looked really... And, and, oh, uh, that was a good... Mm. No, no, mm. I, no, I'm serious. He, yeah. I, I'm, I, I'm very comfortable with my sexuality, and I will tell he looks you... looks good, man. Rick Martel looks good, and he did an incredible... Not, not giving away too many spoilers, probably the best showing of the entire Rumble. Uh, of the actual Rumble match, oh, mm-hmm. easily, mm-hmm. easily. Um, mm-hmm. Cracking. Um, who else do we have? Rick Martel... The, uh, yeah, Rick Mattel does the reverse promo on yeah, Jake, yeah, obviously. Yeah. British Bulldog. British Bulldog's back. Yeah, yeah. Good to see. Yeah, it was yeah, not not a great promo, but it was good to see. It was like, I'm glad I'm a Bulldog. I'm Rrr. glad I'm a Bulldog. Yeah. No, that, no, that's Scottish, isn't it? What was it? He's, he's only from Manchester. He's from Manchester. Man, Man, wasn't he? Yeah. Manchester. Man. Well, he's uh, actually from Leeds, but they build him from Manchester. Oh, that yeah, was Dynamite Kid. Dynamite Kid was No, Dynamite Leeds. Kid, that's right, yeah. No, Bulldog is Manchester. Yeah. Uh, great wrestler, man. Good to see Bulldog back. Yeah. And we get some good stuff from Bulldog yeah. now as well. And leading up to the SummerSlam in the UK. Mm. Yeah, that, that's soon. a classic. Coming up very soon. Classic. classic. Some good stories you know, about that match yeah, we're as well. Campaigning about, yeah, you know, they're complaining a lot about having pay-per-views. Or is it WrestleMania specifically in the UK? But they want more pay-per-views in the UK. And this Let's get been, a pay-per-view Yeah, in the people UK. have been talking about that for years. Well, we've it's had them here before. One Night Stand happened yeah, in yeah. the UK. But uh, like a major one, Carnage. like a SummerSlam or a WrestleMania, I think that's what they want. Or a Royal Rumble. I'm, you know? I'm happy with a TLC in the UK. That That's fine to me. Look, they, they had the UK tapings recently. They had AJ Styles win the title. Before it was shown on TV, people knew about it. Mm-hmm. Guess what people did? They went and watched... The show yeah. instead. It, it doesn't matter that much that we're in different time zones. Yeah. And, I mean, look, if wrestling was on a Sunday afternoon in the UK, which is what time they'd need to show it in America, because it's always on a Sunday, you'd watch it, right? Yeah. You know, I used to watch it on a Sunday time. afternoon. I used, to, I used to watch Sunday night. I used to stay up and watch Sunday Night Heat back in the day. Exactly, it was on, like, Sunday Night Heat, because yeah. it was on on a yeah, Sunday, yeah. yeah. But, but it was the same with, like, football. If you, like, people watch football on a Sunday afternoon, people watch sports on an afternoon. There's no reason why the WWF couldn't put a pay-per-view for America on in the afternoon if it started at 7 o'clock here. Anyway, mm-hmm. <coughs> um, Mr. Perfect promo, who is back to be an Intercontinental Champion at this point. Mm-hmm. And Tugboat. Oh, no. Go on. Heep. Go on, do it. I don't think he does that. I don't think he has. The, uh, yeah, I think it's literally just that. I don't think he has a. I don't think there's an end to it. I think it's a peep. I think it's literally I like a just. Peep. Uh, it's not. Uh, that sounds like a door opening to a, a bank or something like that, like the safe opening. Uh, it was beep. Um, uh, Tugboat's promo, right? This is do, this do, is wrestling. Go on. Beep. Beep. <laughs> <laughs> Have I got it right? Yeah. You sound like a chav uh, having his toes run over by his uh, cheap car. <laughs> uh, so we have a tugboat promo. This is like typical 80s promo. I don't know. I wrote no, it down. Definitely, definitely not the Shockmaster. No, definitely not the Shockmaster. Um, <laughs> Sorry, it's happening again. Oh, it's <laughs> thinking of the Shockmaster. Here we go. <laughs> um, let me do my tugboat promo. Uh, I'm going to tear them apart piece by piece. I've got life preservers for all of them. Life preservers and a big rubber boat as they toss them out. <laughs> they catch you with that big rubber boat and they could all go back to a port where they belong because I'll be the sole survivor. <laughs> <laughs> what rubber boat is he on about, man? <laughs> Beep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, would you two birds bring so much joy into the world? Um, <laughs> Roddy has been for lunch with Virgil today, so we get to see a yeah. little bit of a background between Roddy and Virgil. Telling which, him that money isn't everything. Telling him that money's in, in everything, and that um, Virgil's opinions on money is starting to change. 
He even tipped the waitress. <laughs> no, I don't need to admit that. No, that was right. No, he said. He said Did he actually say that? No, they said they 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 didn't even t- they they didn't tip the waitress. They just walked away. That was it. But that's not a good thing. I'm pretty sure. That's a heel move. Well, it is mean, a heel move. Well, what no? What he said, like I say, he just said the, tipping a waitress he, is like the face thing to do. Oh, like, it, yeah, yeah, thank you very something much. Something about either tipping the waitress or not tipping the waitress, but not living not leaving them a hundred dollar bill or something like that. Ah. Something along those lines. Anyway, but if go you left them a hundred dollar bill, that'd be like. Mega face. Anthony. That means Million Dollar Man is a good man. <laughs> Tipping do- waitresses a hundred dollar bills. Anthony. That's amazing. Anthony. Yeah. Should we move on? We can. Uh, Million Dollar Man promo where he talks about money buying him the best bodyguard in the world and now a tag team partner. Virgil, Virgil looks, looks very happy. Virgil yeah, he looks really unhappy, yep. Frustrated at this point. Uh, so we had Ted DiBiase uh, with Virgil versus Dusty Rhodes and Dustin Rhodes. Who's Dustin Rhodes, Dom? <laughs> That was a nice little lead in there. It was, and you weren't ready because you were sipping your tea. (laughs) (laughs) Gold dust. (laughs) Dustin Rhodes is gold dust. Um, Yeah, no. So, so Dustin, who who you will recognise as um, as gold dust from today's uh, today's roster, Um, he had his first match. In the WWF, uh, today's pay per view. Oh, this uh, was the very first match. Uh, oh, oh, actually, oh, hang on, hang on. Technically, not his very first match in the WWF. Now, WWE was against Paul Diamond um, during an MSG show on September the twenty first, nineteen ninety. This is his first pay per view. He is the longest active WWE performer, wrestling on and off for the promotion for twenty seven years. Paul Diamond is in Kato. Is in Kato. Oh, right, excellent, cool. Yes. Sorry. Uh, so he's known for performing for, as you will imagine, he is uh, known for performing for various promotions such as World Championship Wrestling, Total Nonstop Action Wrestling, under the name and he, he had he had Dustin Rhodes throughout all of his promotional runs in varying at varying times. Kind of a kind of a big big identity identity crisis man. Mm, is, seven. Is Gold Dust? Yes, seven, and also Black Rain. Right. Um. Oh God, yeah, seven. Um. We'll post that on the Facebook too. Probably one of the worst gimmicks and the most inappropriate gimmicks. Talking about inappropriate yeah, well, I don't gimmicks. know if it's inappropriate. We just pissed off. Seven. So, have you ever seen the seven? Yeah, when he comes out and he's like, they've told me to come out and, and did dress you see, me did as Did you see the promos seven. with the kids at the window? Oh, no, I haven't seen that. Yeah, 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 yeah. A promo with the kids yeah, at the, the window. Yeah, the kids, the kids. Don't at the, sound good. Kids at the window and seven's face pops up at the window. Oh. Watching the kids. Oh. Mm, white, white face paint, black overcoat. Black hat. So why does white face paint mean anything? I, no, I'm like, ta- I, I, know, I, I get what you're saying, but you, like, you, you he look, was made out to be a paedophile. You look like Festus. <laughs> right, but Wait, why not Festus, white face not paint? Festus, not Festus, because that's a WWE gimmick currently uh, by who Festus was um, Luke Gallows. Um, he looked like Fester, go. Uncle Fester. Uncle yeah, Fester. There you go. So anyway, so... Um, Back on point, Anthony. You are you are you are dragging <laughs> you are dragging me off point today. <laughs> Go on. I'm having fun. I'm sorry, I'm just enjoying myself. Right, well, will you stop enjoying yourself? <laughs> oh, I'm, oh. I'm busy. Um, so, okay, so he performed with CWF and NWA in the 80s. Uh, went to all, uh, all Japan for a quick tour before landing in the WWE for his first run in, the ni- in 1990. Uh, went to WCW as well. Um, his, his, his kind of first solid tag team run in WCW was with Barry Windham, of course, a very famous uh, Windham, uh, very famous wrestling family. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, uh, Bray Wyatt and all that. And, and that ilk IRS uh, yeah. IRS um, it was, so he won the tag team titles in WCW also won the US championship there against Ricky Steamboat oh they were also they were also tag team partners for a brief time as well was this as Dustin then this was as Dustin yes right. um, so eventually he eventually lost the US title to a, to one Steve Austin who Steve Austin who Steve Austin was that stunning Steve Austin that was stunning Steve Austin very good um, so yeah, so so Steve Austin uh, beat uh, Dustin for the US title in WCW, which then led to him leaving the company and debuting as Gold Dust in 1995. He went on to his very successful feuds with the likes of Razor Ramon, Triple H, and Roddy Piper, even winning the Intercontinental title from Razor Ramon. And of course, he went on to many uh, Intercontinental Championship reigns, making him in many lists and many people's lists one of the greatest Intercontinental Champions of all time, especially during this period. Period. Yeah, it was good. He even controlled one 
of one of his major roles, which people tend to forget, is that during Mankind's first great feud with The Undertaker, Goldust was pulling the strings. He Goldust was. was the controller of Mankind. He was. In fact, that whole feud with Undertaker was excellent. Was very clever. Very great clever. promos. Oh man, I, I, makes me really want to makes me want to go back and watch Goldust matches like from this time because one we'll of the greatest one of the greatest in ring psychologists. Well, it's not from this time because Goldust no. don't come until like well, sorry, yeah, sorry, not this nine, time. Yeah, nineteen ninety five. Five. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, basically, um, after a, a good solid run in the WWE, where he had um, quite deep uh, promos involving um, his on-screen valet, but real life Molina, um, uh, there was some, there was some kind of intense stuff there where he ended up breaking up, uh, breaking away from Molina, and also breaking up with her off-screen. Kind of had a, a, a midlife crisis where you know he he, uh, he ended up taking ended up doing lots of variations of gold dust um, around that kind of late 90s really kind of weird stuff he, he was, well, even, he was coming out in like neon yeah, and stuff was, like he, that there, yeah. was a, there was a Marilyn Manson dust believe it or not uh, I was, didn't know there that was a, there was a bunch of them yeah a bunch of them and he had uh, Luna Vachon as his manager at uh, the time Luna yeah, Vachon this, was kind of like a, kind of like a midlife I guess a midlife crisis sort of sort of uh, gold dust but that was a great really, man really entertaining time one of his one of his greatest feuds was uh, with <clears> Brian Pillman the late great Brian Pillman and the Hart Foundation uh, as Dustin um Gold Dust again came back um, n- numerous times. Again, very very prone to identity identity uh, identity, identity crisis. crisis. But it was Dustin um, had numerous runs with with Gold Dust in the company, um, and even a, and even a stalker and a and a, um, and a and a mascot in the in Blue Dust, aka the Blue uh, Mi- the Blue, the Blue Meanie, Meanie from right, ECW. Great, yeah, um, I have I have so much love for Gold Dust. He's one of my favorite characters in wrestling history. So I could go on and on, but I'm trying to make this as brief as possible. Um, returned to WCW in 2001 with a terrible gimmick. Uh, which we've referenced seven. Um, I will post the promos on our uh, Facebook. Um, cringeworthy, um, probably more so cringeworthy. He was, he was really pissed off. Pro- yeah, one, probably yeah. more so cringeworthy than uh, than uh, the one, maybe the ones we're talking about here. Um, so he had, as a response to that, he became the American Nightmare, which has oddly been adopted now uh, by Cody Rhodes, uh, the sim- similar name. Um, so he was the American Nightmare in WCW. Uh, he was later suspended um, and finished up his contract in WCW for calling Vince McMac- Vince Russo, who of course then controlled uh, WCW. Was right in WC- yeah, 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 WCW. He, yeah, he also wrote and controlled for, uh, quite a lot of the booking for, for a period of time. Uh, called him an asshole on on, w- on a WCW radio show. You're an asshole. Um, that's a that's a that's a good that's a good asshole thing there. Thanks, baby. You kind of yeah, you throw me off my gold. Dust. I'm just trying to like spice vibe. it up. You're doing spice great. Spice it you're, you're up. Doing, you know you're doing really good. You're spicing me you're up. You're doing really good. I'm really interested. Please continue. Uh, please continue. <laughs> I will continue. I will continue. <laughs> you ready? I'm ready. Thank you. I'm going to talk about TNA and Black Rain. TNA as well. TNA he was in TNA. I so, that. so yeah. After he got suspended, you know, you wouldn't remember that, but it's, but again, very, very dark and very heavy. You know, quite an interesting gimmick. We'll watch some videos. They're all on YouTube. Um, so he had a very successful team when he returned back to the WWE in the 2000s with Booker T, of course, Book Dust, as they were called. A couple of tag team title reigns there. Which is what they were trying to recreate with uh, Golden Truth, wasn't it? Kind of, sort of a similar entertain, between, yeah, similar yeah. entertaining vibe. Um, uh, he left, he left WWE again, again in two thousand three. Very again during this time, lots of lots of back and forth. I think Vince and, and WWE really loved Dustin, and obviously because of his family background, but also the gimmicks. And he was a very clever worker. Still to this day, oddly, I think um, he looks better now <laughs> in his forty eight. Yeah, he does, man. Forty eight year on this planet because he hides them um, roads boobies. Well, yeah, with the with the yeah. Yeah, because he, he has little boobies. But 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 he but he also will you stop talking about his boobies? He's a very fit looking man right these days. No, not in not in nineties. He's he's more attractive now than yeah. he was then. Yeah, he's yeah. a very he's a good looking older dude. He was at NXT last night. Yes, he was. The NXT Takeover War Games, which you can see on Facebook. Our, our review, if you check us out on Facebook. Anyhow, so uh, in TNA, very interesting um, side note. He had a gimmick called Black Rain, which was an improved and much creepier, darker version of I guess what they were trying to do with Seven um, very much Dustin Road they, they'd obviously given him a lot of creative control um, over this so so do check although he looks huge 
Like he, he you could tell he was he was in a dark place, uh, literally. And and through gimmick, uh, through the gimmick, he was he was much bigger. He was a super heavyweight at this point, um, as Black Rain. So he and he, had, he played on this whole identity crisis between Dustin and Black Rain, and they had like an internal battle. It was very well done. Um, doesn't get the credit it deserves. He had an incredible feud during this time with Raven, of course, one of the greatest, uh, one of my favorite wrestlers from this time, one of the greatest in ring psychologists of all time, I think. Um, returned to WWE in 2008, um, did some did numerous angles before becoming a backstage producer and again and then again uh, departing. Uh, his most recent run, which is what we're on now in 2017, uh, he came back a couple of years ago from Brotherhood with his brother Cody Rhodes, um, won the tag titles there and it later inspired um, fatefully and rather unfortunately his brother to become Stardust in an effort to regain the tag team gold uh, with his brother. Um, that didn't really work out too well for either of them. No. Cody Rhodes has, of course, gone on to perhaps greater success in the independent scene as part of the Bullet Club. Goldust still maintains a main roster spot on Raw. Um, however, has perhaps not found similar, uh, the same success. He had gold, uh, a stint with Our Truth as the Golden Truth, which was entertaining enough. And they teased, they did tease a return to Shattered Dreams Productions, which was how they debuted Goldust during that 1995 yeah. Roddy Piper Razor <clears throat> Ramon feud he had these wonderful vign uh, vignettes and they did them again um, as recently as two or three months ago some great wordplay yeah as recently as two or three months ago and then they've just stopped them uh, yeah. there was a his, his, his most his most recent notable on screen moment was against Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt which then of course led to a very uh, like a two week feud with Finn Balor over uh, over uh, you know not being and that was all about Finn Balor stealing gold dust makeup yeah it, well no it was all about it was about <laughs> Finn Balor stealing gold dust makeup <laughs> what that's what the feud was about it wasn't about no, that it wasn't <laughs> well, I it was all about the, it was all about but it was all about makeup and about yeah yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. about what Bray Wyatt was like trying to prove the man inside you could take the this. makeup off and it yeah. would just be a man and and then Goldust came back and was like, I'm not a pushover. It won't, it won't because Finn Balor stole Goldust eyeliner. It, it was not. <laughs> will, you, you, will you take this seriously? <laughs> right, go on. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Right, get on with it. Okay. Jesus Christ. Are you, are you, are you, are you any more? Uh, right, so yeah, good, I'm good done. For, man. I'm done. you done? I'm done. Good work. Thanks. That was really good. You really like Goldust. I really like Goldust. You always <laughs> talk about Goldust and having... Uh, let's do this match. Wait. Do we do this match? Oh, you know, it just looks like I'm about to. I was, I was, I was, I was doing the thing. Go the on, thing with the. Do the thing. I'm, I'm, oh, no, no. <laughs> I can't do it now. It's so awkward. What? What? You can't breathe in. I <laughs> 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 can do it. <laughs> You just like snorting. <laughs> I couldn't do it without laughing. But it's not hard to do it, it's just breathing. Come on, you do breathing. it, you do it. You gotta do the. You gotta do the. Uh, no, I don't you have to do it. Rub yourself, Anthony. You have to... <laughs> it's not as good as mine. What? It's not as good as mine. <laughs> 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 Carry on. I'm just gonna die in the corner. So <laughs> into the match. Oh no. <laughs> Are you composed now? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so it starts off with Virgil and DiBiase getting Irish whipped into each other. Uh, DiBiase orders Virgil to take out Dustin, gets Virgil to go yeah. into the ring. A nice showing from Virgil here. He's quite good in the ring. Yeah. Dustin did good work I, in the I ring. Really, honestly, I got a lot of time for lonely Virgil. I got a lot, <laughs> I got a lot, you know, I got a lot of time for him as a ring-ring oh. competitor. He could have done a lot more. I'm not entirely sure. What I think they just put not him. Not sure in, what they just put him in a manager's role and that, or, or a bodyguard role, and he kind of got stuff with that. He even got yeah, stuff with that done, in WCW. He could have done stuff after the DBS feud, and he didn't really. He did a little bit of stuff, but not. I'm not sure that was his fault. Maybe it was booking, but you know, maybe, maybe he was an in, it was a good ring in ring talent. Um, Dustin, in terms of in the ring, looked really good. Um, mm. 
not not as good as we'd get to know Dustin becoming when he becomes gold dust, mm-hmm. but I think he just needed that gimmick at the moment. He had no gimmick. He was just the son of a plumber. He was the son. Of, no, he wasn't the son of a plumber because Dusty Rhodes wasn't a, a grandson. Plumber. It was of a grandson of a plumber. He was the son of a wrestler. Yeah, a son of a wrestler who was son of a plumber. Okay. Mental. The grandson um, of a plumber. <clears throat> grandson of a plumber. He just needed a gimmick, didn't he? Mm. Really, he just needed a gimmick. And when he got that gimmick, um, I don't think he was happy at first with the gold dust gimmick. I don't think he knew how to make it work. And then at some point, it clicked and it mm. became mm. an iconic wrestling yeah. legend, um, who will no doubt be in the Hall of Fame, no doubt whatsoever. Um, Ted DiBiase gets in the ring again, dus- against Dustin and he dominates as soon as he gets in against Dustin. So we see the dynamic of Virgil and Dustin with uh, Dustin getting most of the win. And then as soon as DiBiase comes in, Dustin's on the back foot then until he tags in Dusty, who then dominates yeah. Ted DiBiase. So some really nice sort of really, play yeah, on... Really well done. On, um, Dusty looks great as well. It was it was nice play, not just on wrestling, but on sort of a generation of wrestling and the sort of... Um, especially with Dustin and, and, and Dusty that that was it was nice stuff it was yeah. a good match this um, when Dusty gets asleep on DBSC Virgil comes in to help his master Dustin hurts his knee when Virgil avoids a knee strike in the corner and Dustin at this point is selling the knee heavily uh, DBSC eventually gets Dusty in a roll up pin so I mean the match was okay mm-hmm. um but then it's all the stuff that happens after the match that's really sort of iconic, yeah. I suppose, and yeah. sets up a massive story going forward for Lonely Virgil. Uh, DBS, he gets the mic and calls Virgil an idiot. Yeah, yeah. He says, get my belt and put it around my waist. Um, talks to him like absolute yeah. shit. And all this uh, time, you've him. got Gorilla who's like, oh, he's got to think of his family and all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. and DBS, he does that. He says, think of your family, think of your mother and all this stuff. And, you know, Virgil, like, he throws down the belt in protest, but then, but then goes to pick it up again because DBS reminds him that he yeah, needs got, the he, money. He needs money for his mother. And you know, all that stuff. Yeah. And then uh, he smacks him with a belt. Yeah, Virgil so smacks him with a belt. Yeah, yeah. Probably Great the, story. Probably sadly the biggest moment in Virgil's career. Sadly, uh, yeah. But sadly. it was a nice. It was nice because everybody loved it. Everybody it was good. It was it was whole great place, story. The whole place, the whole place erupted for Virgil. It was memorable, and it created a memorable WrestleMania match as well, and certainly the most memorable thing that Virgil's done. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> not the most memorable thing DBS has done, but a great enhancement to mm-hmm. his character on saying that he even treats the people that work for him like absolute and a garbage. good launch point. For, for for now, for Virgil as well, because Virgil Could have been, promised, yeah. you know, he won the million dollar championship and, yep. and all that stuff, and this yep. was a great feud for what it was, you know, for, for what time, it was, yeah. yeah. It just didn't pay off didn't, afterwards, yeah, no, that's no, the problem. No. Um, so then we get an interview with the Hulk. He's dedicating the Rumble to the troops who mm-hmm. are out there. There's uh, After this pay per view, there's going to be a Hulk tour where he goes and talks to troops, families, and stuff mm-hmm. like that that's coming up. So WWF is sort of doing their thing for the troops. Even though they're doing some a really silly storyline with Sergeant Slaughter. Um, yeah, Mean Gene gets a report that Slaughter has defaced the American flag. This is during the interview segment. Really corny. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I'm just getting reports that uh, Hulk threatens Slaughter... Um, Halfway through this interview, he lost his thought, didn't he? Yeah. And he and he says to me, you, you, you know what I mean, brother. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a, a promo. It's a shame he lost his thought. Uh, then we move on to the what is supposed to be the main match. I don't think it was as good as other matches in no. the card. But um, the Royal Rumble. Now we've got a couple of new entrants into the Royal Rumble, so mm-hmm. we'll go through them quickly. Uh, I've got Sambu Simba was as it, a new was, entrant. It was Sambu Simba. Was, Sambu was, Simba, yeah. 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 Um, who was actually Tony Atlas. Nice. Tony Atlas was in WrestleMania 2. Yes, yeah, so he, um, he was part of the Battle Royale. We didn't actually cover him because was, there was so many I new like ones him. to cover. So I thought I'd do a little bit about Tony Atlas because he is in the Hall of Fame as of 2006, I think. Um, he was the very first man to press slam and pin Hulk Hogan. Um, even though Hulk Hogan's 
foot was on the rope and the referee didn't see it. So that's a big accolade right there. there. Um, he teamed with Rocky Johnson to defeat the Wild Samoans to win the WWF Tag Team Champions, becoming the first Afro-American team to hold the belts as Soul Patrol in 1983. So Atlas had been with the company <coughs> for a while. This was just a new gimmick. Um, as I said, he did appear at WrestleMania 2 in the Battle Royale. He was witness also to the fatal assault on Bruder Bru- Bruiser Brody. Um, that was Jose Gonzalez, who was a fellow wrestler and booker. Asked Brody to go into the shower to discuss business. Brody entered the shower stall and a few minutes later a scuffle happened. Followed by two groans loud enough for the entire locker room to hear. Atlas came into the shower and saw Brody bent over and holding his stomach. Atlas looked at Gonzalez and he was holding a knife, which led to the death of Bruiser Brody, obviously. Um, there's a great investigation on this. Like, if you if you if you are interested in this story, go have a look at WrestleMania. He did. He's, I think it's WrestleMania. Does great case studies on stuff like mm. this. On and there's a really good one on Bruiser Brody and what happened and sort of the history of it and people's mm. different ideas of it. Go check it out, man. Um, Atlas helped Mark Henry also to retain his title at SummerSlam, attacking Matt Hardy. Oh yeah, which happened a lot, a lot more recently. Was that was that in the ECW Championship? Because Mark Henry held that held that as well as it Matt Hardy. It could have been. I can't remember. Yeah, it was yeah. around that time. Yeah, so it would have been. Yeah, because I know Matt Hardy and Mark Henry feuded over the ECW there we go. Championship. That's probably why. Yeah. Um, so Tony Atlas has been a big part. He was also in Legends House. He was mm-hmm. part of that. He yeah, signed a Legends contract yeah, with him a couple that, of years yeah. ago. So. Um, yeah, do you want to talk to us about anyone? Uh, Shane Douglas. Shane Douglas. Was that, anyone, Shane Douglas? Was that anyone as in like, you have no idea who I'm talking about? Right? I know exactly who he was, but I wanted you to say it. Shane Douglas. Shane Douglas. <laughs> say his name again. Shane Douglas. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, so Shane, Shane Douglas, as Anthony calls him, uh, was the first ever ECW champion. Uh, he was Dean Douglas. Um, ECW, we, are we on about Eastern Championship Wrestling? Eastern Wrestling, Championship Wrestling yeah. Right, okay. Uh, Shane Douglas, Shane Douglas um, was, the, was the catalyst between, of the transition between ECW, the, the, kind of, the, kind of, the kind of coming of age... When between, it when they turned between, into extreme, between, yeah, between Eastern. So was extreme. he the first extreme championship? The ex- wrestling? First, the first extreme championship. Right, wrestling, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Because Eastern Championship Wrestling had yeah, been yeah, going yeah, on for yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So so clarifying. So th- thanks for that. You're welcome. So the first ever ECW Extreme Championship Wrestling champion. Thank you, Anthony. Um, it was also Dean Douglas in WWE. But I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Uh, wrestled in the NWA through uh, until 1990 before his first run in the WWE. This run, um, he had feuds during this time with Dino Bravo before teaming with. Uh, before before moving on to WCW um, and teaming with Steve Austin. Steve Austin gets everywhere. Everywhere. He does, man. Work, Stunning. Hard worker. Uh, then later became the franchise in ECW in the early 90s and became their world champion. Uh, during his championship run, he had some great matches with Ron Simmons, who, of course, was Farouk in the WWF and E. Um, and widely credited as the first um, Afro-American uh, champion, uh, world champion. Um Damn. Mm, world champion. Not, world, cha- not world inter- champion. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, world champion. He had not the, intercontinental. No. So someone else. No, you had the world champion. Carry on. You had the world championship. Are you, are you, are you going to correct me? No. Nope. Okay, good. Good. Um, do you remember Farouk? Yes. And Ron Simmons? Yes. Mm. I, uh, 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 APA? Yeah. Acolyte Protection Agency? Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, um, Okay, good. And also, um, he was in the Nation of Domination. He led the Nation of he Domination. He led it and had a feud with The Rock. Until The Rock came and tried to take over. Yeah, that yeah. was the whole point. I've heard of Farouk. Good. Thanks. Damn. Damn. Um, so, yeah, basically, there was, a, there was a particularly notable time in ECW for... Um, uh, I keep wanting to call him Dean because that's how I remember him because I was watching wrestling. I came to the WWF around the time that Dean Douglas was there for a very brief period of time. Uh, most notable time for him in uh, ECW in terms of uh, the early stages was when he formed a triple threat and it was called Triple Threat with Dean Malenko and Chris Benoit to very noticeable wrestlers. This was in ECW. Uh, this was in ECW. Cool. They were both in ECW. Chris Benoit, Dean Malenko, yeah, yeah, and Eddie yeah, Guerrero yeah. all Oscar. started their careers in extreme championship wrestling cool. in the, in America. Started. In America. Okay. Mm. I think Dean Malenko went from WCW to ECW and then back to WCW. There you go. I think. Uh, Carry on. 
Yeah, so, so his first brief run in uh, WWE came in about 1995 uh, as Dean Douglas, as I've mentioned. Um, he's kind of had this annoying kind of teacher gimmick. Uh, actually won the Intercontinental title a little while um, after Shawn Michaels had to forfeit it uh, after he was attacked uh, by Marines. Um, he, yes. Yeah. He had an unfortunate running. With he got a, few a black eye, basically yeah. in real life. Yeah, on on on, on, uh, on the streets and and uh, to forfeit the title couldn't compete. So Dean Douglas had it uh, for a while and feuded with Razor Ramon, um, and who eventually beat him for the title. Uh, he left the company uh, over a pay dispute with Vince McMahon. To which point he decided <laughs> that he would never work for Vince again, which is why we've never seen uh, Shane Douglas as talented and as notable as he is in other wrestling organisations work for WWE since that point he returned to ECW and feuded with Raven for the main title for the world championship uh, but didn't succeed he did however manage to win the TV title from two called Scorpio um, who had a, who I think we're not we're not up to him yet but he had a, a, not a great run in uh, WWF as Flash Funk in in, in later uh, time but I digress because Two Cold Scorpio was a badass in ECW and this was quite a nice feud um, he also reformed Triple Threat his um, his uh, faction that he started with Malenko and Benoit with uh, Chris Candido um, who became Skip of the Body Donners and uh, Brian Lee who we've also talked about um, this, uh, this was around sort of 1996 before feuding with the human suplex machine Taz uh, and eventually regaining the ECW title. He left again after a dispute uh, with Paul Heyman. He's quite an argumentative guy, was uh, Shane Douglas by all accounts. And Paul Heyman. And Paul Heyman, yes. <laughs> uh, upon arriving back into ECW in the late 90s, he had a successful feud with Ric Flair as part of the New Blood group, uh, who was feuding with uh, the Millionaires Club, led by Ric Flair at the time. Um, the the New Blood was Vince Russo and Eric Bischoff, their on-screen personas. Um he even got a world title shot against Jeff Jarrett, but failed to win. Uh, he later became the United States champion, beating General Erection. Um, <laughs> yes, that was a that was that was a gen, that was a genuine gimmick right. uh, around that time. Uh, it was Bill DeMott, um, who, who who had the the unfortunate title of uh, of, of of General General, e uh, General Erection. There was Erection. also Major Guns. Um, Major That's Guns. not as good as General. Gen yeah, there, there was there was a few um, a few terrible factions in WCW at that time. Um, three Count was another one. The boy band. Uh, uh, NWO was another one. Well, NWO wasn't terrible. No. Um, so yeah, he it lost. It become terrible. Yeah, it did. It became uh, so he he left. Uh, so he lost the title, uh, US title to Scott Steiner, uh, and then Vince purchased ECW and WCW. He had a brief run as the Extreme Pro Wrestling. Uh, champion in 2003 um, and then he headed to TNA where his first match was against Raven's then disciple CM Punk so there's okay. a nice little a nice little thing there and obviously again a massive fan of Raven so it was cool to see at that time and I, I remember watching all that unfold um, you so got real excited when Shane Douglas come in yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think it was it was really cool to see. Um, so he, again, feuded with Raven in TNA, um, and be before becoming semi-retired and a commentator for TNA, briefly managed the Naturals uh, during this time. Left TNA in two thousand seven, returned in two thousand nine to feud with uh, legendary independent uh, competitor Christopher Daniels over a contract, uh, over regaining another contract for TNA, um, and also had a couple of matches with uh, AJ Styles during this period of time as well. Obviously, AJ Styles a standard bearer or then standard bearer, bearer for TNA uh, left the company after only a few matches with Daniels um, before he went to the Indies and since then he's still going he, he's, he's been a, a world champion in a bunch of organisations including uh, pri uh, Price of Glory Wrestling and uh, Pro Wrestling All Stars so quite the career uh, for Very Shane good. Douglas yeah, yeah. Um, another person that's entering the Rumble is Brian Nobbs. So we've got Jerry Sags and Brian Nobbs, who were the Nasty Boys. Uh, Jerry Sags isn't actually in this Rumble. It's just Brian Nobbs. Um, Jerry Sags was appearing in a lot of the dark matches yeah, at yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they'd have the, the dark matches, a match they'd have on before the pay-per-view to hype up the crowd. <coughs> what you'd probably describe as a kickoff show nowadays. Um, or however they weren't televised, unlike they are nowadays. Uh, the two of them were 
birthed childhood friends, which is where they met and got together, and the former Nasty Boys in the AWA, the American Wrestling Association. In 1990, the Nasty Boys joined WCW, um, where they initially feuded with the Steiner Brothers a lot, um, and then in late 1990, joined WWF and were a regular tag team until 1993. I remember liking the Nasty mm, Boys. They, yeah. they did sit... They had a cool little hard I mean, first of all, the me. name Nasty is yeah, great. Yeah. It sounds uh, like like gross, right? And some of their moves, one of the moves was the 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 did grab someone opponent's head. One of them had grab an opponent's head and ram it into the armpit of the other opponent. Yeah. And it was like, Ugh, you know. But they looked like that, didn't yeah. they? They looked like uh, a villain from yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles yeah, yeah. or something like that. Like a, you yeah, know? like a grungy villain, yeah. Yeah, man, they were cool. Um, so I think they had was, a face run very briefly, very briefly. In WWF? In WCW. In WCW. There was with WCW for a while, mm. actually. Um so there was with WWF until 1993, until a European tour where they were suspended and later fired. During this time, they were a high-profile tag team, defeating the Hart Foundation for the tag team championships at a future WrestleMania, I believe, I think it is. And then they went back to WCW in 1993 to 1997 and started to work with a lot of people, including a lot of work with Mick Foley, the... They had Mick Foley as one of the Nasty Boys at one point, or Cactus Jack helped the Nasty Boys at one point. Then they also had some great matches, and I'm pretty sure it was Jerry... It was Brian Nobbs. I remember Mm. watching one on a Mick Foley DVD, and it was a brutal match, like a really good, brutal... Mm. What you expected at the time from Cactus Jack, really, but a really good match. Um, the team were known for working really stiff with their opponents. They had a reputa- repu- reputation of, of hurting people in the ring, basically. Um, and they'd been back and forth a few times between WCW, WWF, and even TNA in 2010. They were an iconic tag team. They did put on some great mm-hmm. matches, very brawly in the ring. Um the reputation precedes them, having shoot fights with Scott Hall and an altercation with New Jack at one point. This is um, Brian Nobbs. Um, even Mick Foley said they were sloppy as hell to a point of being dangerous, but they knew how to brawl. Mm. And he was right. Um, I don't think they're the best wrestlers in the world, but they were they were iconic, mm. you know. Uh, Nob, uh, Brian Nobbs is married to... Nob! Nob! I can say Nob as much as I want because I'm just saying a surname. Nobs. It was Nobs. All right. Nobs. Plural. Plural Nobs. <laughs> More than one Nob. Uh, Nobs is bra- married to Greg Valentine's sister um, and he's really good friends with Hulk Hogan. He was on the reality show Hogan Knows Best and yeah. Brooke Knows Best. Have you ever seen them? Yes. Are they any good? Meh. Yeah. What's Meh. it? What is it? Just uh, like the Osborns, but. Yeah. With, right. Yeah. Basically. I've never seen it. Um, so we'll move into the Royal Rumble. Hope that was informative to you all and you've learned a little bit about some wrestlers. I certainly did about Shane Douglas. I thought Dom did a wonderful job today. Leave a like in the comments below and tell Dom what a wonderful job he did on Shane Douglas, please. Um Are you being serious? Yeah, man. I enjoyed it. That it was, was good. That was lovely. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, man. Welcome. Uh, Are you being sarcastic? No, I'm not being sarcastic. Why do you think I'm being sarcastic? Why can't I just say something nice to you and you just accept it? You never say anything nice to me. It's nice. It was good. Well done. Thank you. It was all right. Thank you. I nearly cuddled you at one point, but I thought it'll put you off and you'll get angry and upset. Oh, no, I would like to cuddle. Oh, is it nice? (laughs) (laughs) Do you you want to carry on? Yeah, yeah, we'll get it done. Bret Hart is the first to enter the ring, um, along with (laughs) Dino Bravo. Oh, you just touched my leg in a very sensitive spot. Um, Along with Dino Bravo. How big is it? (laughs) Not that big. I'm pretty sure I didn't touch him. (laughs) Legs could be sensitive as well as Brian Nobbs. Um, (laughs) Bret gets a couple of punches and drop kicks against Dino and an atomic drop, um, which nearly gets him over. Then we get a long segment where he's trying to get him over the rope. Happens quite early, though, Mm. in the match. I don't know if we needed to go into this sort of rest. Yeah, it was was, straight away. Um, Greg the Hammer Valentine comes in at number three, starts going after Bravo. What? Hey? Hey? Yeah. What? That was, Why? Really, that was really odd. Why is he not going after Brett? Well, apparently it was more because Dino Bravo's manager was Jimmy Hart. Jimmy Hart was 
the manager of the Rhythm and Blues, when the Rhythm and Blues broke up, Greg Valentine didn't like Jimmy Hart, so that's why he was going after the heel, mm. which I just thought was a bit weird. I don't know if they were trying to push him as a face or they were just running with that storyline. Yeah. Um, yeah, Greg the Hammer Valentine gets Dino Bravo on. Hmm. Uh, Greg attacks Jimmy Hart on the apron. Number four into the ring is Paul Roma. Brett and Paul Roma team on the Hitman. Number five into the ring is the Texas Tornado. Kerry Von Erich. Uh, Gorilla proclaims there's a storm coming. Um, Lays waste to Greg and Paul Roma in the ring. Gets his tornado punch on Greg. Greg. I love that. Right, you love it, but he sells it wrong. He just goes straight, yeah, like... Well, a tornado Drops. punch, you'd normally punch him and they'd spin, like, uh, Perfect did it wonderfully, like, absolutely perfectly. Almost like a pivot. Yeah, yeah, one. so it was like, like a 360 pin. Pivot, yeah. Greg instead sort of did his uh, falling tree, that's what I like to call Shfot. it. Timber! Mm. Which is good, but it wasn't how to yeah. sell the Texas tornado. The idea was you it, it'd would, put your body into spin, a spin. And then you would spin. The idea was you'd punch yeah. and then... You'd spin well, he, like a tornado. Because he spin, he spins. Not really spin. No, he, he definitely did a bit spun. Of he hand. definitely no, he definitely spun. Oh, did he? He did this. Yeah, I can't remember. He does the spin, and then you do this. Yeah, the, I'll I, keep an eye out. The idea is he. Yeah, yeah, he does it. Yeah, that's right. You're he right. spins and you spin. And yeah, yeah, yeah. The the force of the punch. Of the it's just a punch. Well, yeah. So it was just a punch because Greg just did the hammer thing, and even though the hammer thing, the the timber thing is great. Uh, yeah. Anyway, move on. Enjoyed it though. Uh, Rick Martel is in at number six. Rick Martel did really good in this. Uh, Roma really takes good. down Hart and starts doing a pose for the crowd before being beaten by Paul Roma. That sentence makes no sense and I don't know what I was supposed to be saying. Uh, Sabu Simba comes in at this point and has zero impact in the ring, but Brett and Ma- Michael looks Martel like a beast, are going in. Quite, it looks quite yeah, lame. it did look good, yeah. Um, with Brett nearly eliminating Martel, this was a lot mm. of the story all the way through. Yeah, the two they they had a, the two best showings of the whole thing. I thought. Yeah, agreed. Um, Butch Bushwhacker comes in now, dances around the ring until he gets a chop from Greg the Hammer. Didn't really know what to do in the Royal Rumble. Didn't remember how to fight. Martel Bush eliminates. He does his thing. He does his thing. Martel, uh, <laughs> go on. What thing do you want to do? Go on. Ah. <laughs> He's really giving you a lick that time. Man, okay. Uh, Martel eliminates Sambu Simba, nearly eliminating himself, but not quite. It was actually a really good point from Martel here. Then we have Jake the Snake come in. This is the guy that's going to beat Martel. What do I taste of? Shampoo. Nice. Mm. Clean. Mm. Uh, Go straight after the model. The two of uh, a heated and fast exchange in the ring. This was a really good moment in the match, actually. He calls for the DDT, but Martel runs away under yeah. the bottom rope. And the crowd went mental as well. Yeah, it did, yeah. It was good. It was good. Hammer intercepts Jake. I don't really know what Hammer was doing touching Jake at this point. He should have just, just left them two to mm-hmm. go at it. This was the point where we have a bit of story going on, so let's just not have it as a a general brawl as it became later on. And then Martel was nearly nearly eliminated by Jake. Hercules comes in at number 10. Um, Martel, again, nearly out by Bret Hart. So many near falls for Martel. Good. Um, 11 was Tito Santana. Goes straight after Martel yeah. again. We, Pretty we, decent showman from uh, Santana as well. It was. Well, obviously, we've got the old Strike Force feud coming in again for Martel. Mm. So, the, this, this rumble was really built around Martel. Yeah. Really built around Martel. Um, Texas Tornado eliminates Paul Roma at this point. Then, at number 12, we have The Undertaker entering with Brother Love. <laughs> uh, the crowd don't know how to react to Undertaker at this point. They don't know whether to cheer him or boo yeah. him, or they just sort of stay silent. But that's fine. That's because there was he, he was were, a creepy they were character. In awe, they were in awe of him. Yeah. 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 Great. Great work. Anyway, uh, quickly eliminates Bret Hart. Wow. Undertaker and Bret Hart, mm-hmm. and the Undertaker gets it. Gets him straight out. Undertaker takes a lot of punches, but comes back after them. Um, Lots of him and Texas Tornado fighting, actually, yeah. in the ring, which was good. Superfly Jimmy Snooker comes in at 13. Uh, Butch Bushwhacker's thrown out by The Undertaker with ease during this point. At 14, we have The British Bulldog coming in. Goes straight after Hammer and Martel. Not a bad show from Bulldog either. It wasn't bad. No, it was it was good. Um, he stayed in the match a long time as well. Not as long as some, but yeah, stayed in a while. And he goes straight after Hammer and Martel. Uh, Martel... 
get some real punishment in this match. I've wrote that a lot because yeah. it happened a lot. Yeah. It was very similar, though, to what they did possibly better at the next Rumble with, with Ric Flair mm-hmm. in the 1992. And I didn't, this was something I'd never noticed before until sort of re-watching these pay-per-views. Um, Smash comes in at 15 and goes straight after Bulldog, um, but gets run down by him. Jake's going for the DDT on the model again. Um, whilst Rick is... Rick Martel's on the apron, he pulls the rope down, sending Jake over. Mm-hmm. So the model Rick Martel wins his feud over Jake in the, yeah, in the Rumble terms. Pretty much. Uh, Hawk of Legion of Doom goes after everyone. He comes in at 16, but they gang up on him. And then this is where the match starts really, really slowing down. As the, yeah. It just becomes a brawl of, of nothing, really. There's a lot of people and team people in. Yeah. Um, 17, we have Shane Douglas, who goes after Smash, tries to attack Smash from the turnbuckle. Yeah, a lot in the ring. 18, no one comes out. Weird story, this. I don't know how this played Yeah, you had afterwards. this, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, it was a, a spoiler alert. It was supposed to be Macho Man. Um, I should have researched, actually, why what this was about. I'm guessing it's to do with an altercation with Ultimate Warrior backstage, which leads to a mm. greater feud. Probably. We'll probably <laughs> find out for next episode and, and let you yeah, know. Yeah, we'll find out. Um, but yeah, so 18 doesn't come out. When 19 comes out, it's announced that whoever was 18 is eliminated. But you can't... They can't say who it was because they don't know who yeah. it was. Obviously, they knew who it was, but wrestling. <laughs> wrestling. Um, wrestling. Wrestling. Uh, Bulldog goes after The Undertaker at this point. We see David Boy and Undertaker going out at each other. Mm-hmm. 19, The Animal comes in and obviously 18's been eliminated the legion of doom go after undertaker and it takes the two of them to get the undertaker out but the undertaker goes out of his first mm-hmm. rumble at this point um hawk is quickly eliminated soon after by hercules and martel when he's basically doing a bit of celebrating the refs try to get undertaker to leave <coughs> we see undertaker staring at shane mcmahon yeah, who yeah. was the ringside yeah, nice ref. little precursor yeah. precursor to wrestlemania 32 yeah absolutely did you use the word precursor because you saw it written down on my screen no i said it's I a good word I always, precursor. Say, I always say precursor ah, good word mm. good word Who's in at 20, Dom? Uh, Crush is in at 20. Crush is in at 20. And they both double team against Bulldog. So this is Smash and Crush are in the ring. Uh, Demolition's being reunited in the ring. Again, it feels like a massive lull. Not a lot of great stories being told. And the rumble, like, we've had some good rumbles recently. And it's all because they break it down into a beginning, a middle, an end, and have different Mm -hmm. acts within that. So in the last rumble, we saw a nice moment with Strowman, Mm -hmm. Sami Zayn, Ty Dillinger, that sort of thing. Later on in the rumble, you had the Goldberg, Undertaker, blah, 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 blah. It's all about breaking it into smaller sections. And this felt like... I blame it a bit on Greg the Hammer. I feel like he was going around doing, like, teaching people the way to how to do a rumble, which was to fight on the ropes in a way, mm. you know. And that, you see a lot of it in this match, and it's it's not not good because of it. Um, so yeah, uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan comes in at number twenty one and goes straight after Crush. Uh, 22 sees Earthquake enter the ring. He goes after Animal. Animal can't knock him down, and he sends Animal over the top top rope, which means Hacksaw goes after Earthquake. Um, Bulldog is back on the model, Martel, nearly getting him over the top rope again. At number 23 enters Mr. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Master, <laughs> Master Perfect. Perfect. What's that like? I don't know, Is man. Cornwall? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> gonna be all right man. it's gonna be all right it's we're gonna, gonna get through right. it uh very slow walk to the ring for mr perfect with bobby heenan very good strategy yeah it was yeah and the commentators called that out that it was all strategy and it was clever thinking mm-hmm. good uh very slow walk to the ring bobby heenan uh hacksaw quickly goes after him in the ring and perfect reverses um during a run from hacksaw meaning hacksaw goes over the top rope nice to see perfect getting a little bit of a good showing here 24 down, 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 down. Mm-hmm. Hulk Hogan comes in. Um, Smash his, lays into him first. With his big white bum. With his big white bum. Not that you can see it. Um, Smash goes into Hulk first. I didn't really get that. Smash was sort of a fist. He mm. demolition or was it were the heels yeah, at this point? Were heels I think they were heels point. again. Yeah. Yeah. I still struggle getting them as heels and faces. I prefer them as face, I think, demolition. Mm. Um he gets eliminated for his troubles straight away. Then Hulk goes after Earthquake. So we're seeing that feud again between Hulk and Earthquake, which could have been great, but because Earthquake won't let, uh, because Hulk won't let anyone go over him, Earthquake was 
Delegate it to the tag team division later on. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, you can't get Earthquake over the top rope. Um, and then Perfect comes in to help Earthquake. And Earthquake uses that to get his advantage on Hulk Hogan at that point. 25, we have Haku in the ring. Haku didn't do much in this no, one, did he? Nope. Shame, really. Can't, can't, it can't, I can't big him up this, one, this time. No, not this time, no. Um, Hulk throws out Greg the Hammer Valentine. Bye bye. Uh, Martel rips off Hogan's top and uses it to strangle him. Hogan hasn't even had time to rip off his top yet. Nice heel moves from Martel there. Uh, 26, Jim the Anvil Nineheart comes in. Uh, Hogan nearly takes out perfect. Anvil's attacking Hercules. Tito's eliminated at this point. I didn't even see who eliminated mm-hmm. him because mm-hmm. it all sort of happened so quickly. Um, everyone's going for Hogan. Hercules, Haku, and perfect. So at 27, we have Luke Bushwaka. Uh, Luke enters the ring, do, 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 walks over to the other side of the ring, and is thrown straight over by Earthquake. Ah, uh, that's too quick. It was a cracking no, show. No, it was too quick because I was going to say if he stayed in a bit longer, I might lick you again. But ah, uh, but so I only he, I, I don't get a full lick. You, you saved you saved because he didn't spend that long in the room. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> uh, Martel is still in this match despite all the near falls. Again, very very similar to the Ric Flair of. 92. Uh, in 28 is the Nasty Boys, Brian Nobbs. Uh, a lot of people in the ring, not a lot happening. Brian Nobbs uh, takes out Hercules at this point. At 29, we have Warlord coming in, goes straight after Bulldog. Hulk eliminates Smash at this point, and, uh, and he takes a nasty bump on the apron on his way out to Smash, actually. He comes off the top rope and... Mm. Yeah. Um, Hulk then eliminates Warlord. At number 30... Who do we have? Go on. I don't want to do it again. Beep. Me. Tugboat comes in. Goes straight after earthquake. Natural disasters going at it. Cool. Okay. Fine. Tugboat comes in. Face going after earthquake. Don't carry on like that. A bit weird. Yeah. Uh, Perfect's nearly eliminated by Nineheart, but not quite. Shane Douglas was eliminated. Didn't even see who that was by though. Um. Tugboat lifts Rick Martel high with both his hands. The crowd were loving it at that point. Yep. Beep. Shop masters. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Hulk attacks Tugboat. Face versus yeah. the face. Um, Tugboat at this point attacks Hogan back. And Tugboat very nearly eliminates Hogan. Um, but then Hogan gets out Tugboat. Because of course. Because Hogan. Um, wrestling. Wrestling. Um, yeah, yeah, Tugboat. I didn't really see why... Hogan went after two, but I would have expected them to to have mm. worked together. There was supposed to be teams on the Survivor uh, SummerSlam, yeah, and helped each other, other during Survivor Series. I don't really see why there were. I mean, later on, it sort of develops into Tugboat turning his back on Hulk, but Hulk had been such a dick to him in this oh, Rumble. Yeah. Oh yeah, makes sense for him to turn, kind of, baby. Yeah, kind of ridiculous, really. Makes sense for him to turn. Um, Rick Martel eliminates Nineheart, Bulldog eliminates Haku, and then we have the final five, and you were saying at this point, what a cracking final five good, it is. Isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Bulldog, Earthquake, Brian Nobbs, Rick Martel, and Hulk Hogan. Hogan. It was a shame that Macho weren't in this, though, mm. uh, I think. If Macho could have, could have done something for that mid-lull in, yeah. the, in the Rumble. Um, if he'd have shown up. If he'd just shown up. It must have been storyline to yeah. do with Warrior going, but we'll find we will find out before the next pay per view. Uh, Martel still had some energy left in him. He was still going at it, even though he looked exhausted in a way. It, like uh, physically, he really was still going at it in yeah. the ring. Uh, when he attempts a top rope, a top a top rope move, when he attempts a top rope move, a bulldog knocks him off. Off. Earthquake and Brian Nobbs take out the bulldog. Earthquake at this point sits on Hogan's face and says, "Lick my balls." That's not what happens. It's he does pretty the, much. He does what the earthquake. Uh, the uh, the yeah the earthquake splash. And you notice in the promo he just started bouncing around. He always does. It's just like it's just like it's like it's like, it's, it's like he stood on yeah, an earthquake. That's yeah. a, that's oh, he's gimmick. freaking out. It just looks like he's having a he's needs wee or something. Yeah, it's the weirdest foot, it's the weirdest move because it's like it's like he goes from needing a wee Whoa. to like squatting Whoa. and needing a shit Whoa. and like it's an earthquake. and like you know sitting on someone. Yeah. Yeah. Lick my balls. It's kinda weird. Teabagging him. Teabagging him. <laughs> shit, the earthquake teabag. Yeah, the earthquake teabag, that's the name of the move. Um Hulk no sells the teabag. <sighs> 
The earthquake splash. The tea bag. Um, <laughs> uh, Hulk takes out Nobbs and then goes after Earthquake. He goes for the slam, but it's too much for Hogan to lift. Hogan hulks up and slams Earthquake and sends him over the top rope. Um, yeah, uh, uh, it was quite a long two-person ending for the year, actually, with them two fighting mm-hmm. Earthquake and Hogan. I was quite impressed by that. Mm-hmm. It was good. Decent build for the for the feud. Hogan waves his American flag. I'm the real We're really, American. really sorry for putting this gimmick on television. Here's Hogan. Yeah, wow. yeah. Here's yeah. Hogan with an American flag yeah, because yeah. we're still patriotic and we still yeah. love you. Even we don't, we don't like support we don't. Iraqi sympathisers. Mm. I am not a real American. Mm. Um, yeah, and he's, he's holding he's holding up a lot of signs. There's a lot of signs in the audience yeah. slagging off Saddam Hussein yeah, yeah. And, uh, and about slaughter and he's comparisons between the two. Giving his thumbs up and stuff. Hogan, at this point, first man to win the Rumble twice. Mm. Surprised? No. He doesn't win it again, does he? No, I don't think so. No, there's only one person who's won it three times. No, I don't think so. I'm trying to think. Is it Austin? Yes. I think Austin's the only person to win it three times. In the short time he was in WWF. Mm. Because Austin wasn't in the WWF for very long. Compared to the impact he had. Yeah, comparatively comparatively to others. Like Goldust, for example. Or Shauna Michaels. Shauna Michaels. Shauna Michaels. Shauna Michaels. Which is like Shauna Paul. Who's Um, Shauna Paul? He's some some sort of singer. That's Sean Paul. No, Shauna. He always says, "I'm a Shauna Potter," and I'm gonna blow him I don't. I don't really know. He's Sean Paul. I don't know hippity hop. <laughs> He's so white. Why am I so white? <laughs> so, hippity hop, hippity hop. It's Sean Paul. Sean Paul. My name is Sean Paul. It's Sean I'm, Paul. No, he, he, does, he actually says, "My name is Sean Paul." Please, in the comments, can anyone let us know what Sean Paul? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Martel has set a new record in this match for longevity. That's a good word, isn't it? <laughs> well, that's a word you don't know too much about, but yeah, it's a good word. <laughs> 52 minutes and 17 seconds. I'd so, be proud, man. It's like a I'm, dream, it's like a dream it's for a dream, you. Isn't it? It's a dream. America! Um, <laughs> dream! Best match, Dom. Give it, give it, give, give, <laughs> give it, it to me. Give it to me. <laughs> give, give it to me. me. Shot Apollo. <laughs> Oh, um, uh, it's, it's easy. Uh, I'd say the, 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 the probably the tag team match. Easily the, first the tag, tag team, team match. match. What a really great match. Yeah. Go back and watch it. And um, how many stars? Because it, it, it. Let's talk a little bit about the rumble. Um, it won't the best rumble. No. It won't bad either. It, it was. It was quite enjoyable to watch at certain points. It's just that lull in the middle. But the, the start, it was good with Martel and Jake and stuff like that. Ended up quite strong, um, clear storyline going on and stuff like that. It was just that middle lull mm, yeah. that a rumble can often suffer from. Totally. Um, so best match, tag team Rockers versus Orient. Yep, brilliant. That'll have been Great posted start. on the Facebook earlier this week. So go check her out. And um, how many stars are you rating this? How many gay stars? Give me a whole yeah stars. Two. Two? Really? Two. That's harsh, man. I'm normally harsh. I'm starting, I'm, I'm starting to be harsh. Are you? Mm. Congratulations. Why, is, why are you being so harsh? Um, the Rumble didn't didn't overwhelm me. While the Virgil, DiBiase, Rhodes tag team match was great and the um, Rockers Orient Express tag team match was great, um, I wasn't really wowed by anything. I wasn't excited by anything. I thought the slot. Uh, the reason I'm giving it three stars, <laughs> I think the rock. Be the match first time you've given more stars than I have. Yes, it will be possibly. Um, yeah, it's not the highest stars I've given so far. Um, the the, the rock is incredible. The story, especially in the Dustin and Virgil match, was really good. Mm-hmm. I thought they did well with the Warrior Slaughter thing for what it was, especially. Going into that match, like that would, I, I really wasn't looking forward to that match. Mm-hmm. I think I paused the network to see how long I was going to have to sit through it for. Yeah. But it was, it actually ended up really good. So yeah, that is the end of this episode. Please join us on Facebook for live Facebook chats and join our community. Uh, Twitter, we like to tweet out, especially during live events. Yeah, we do a lot of live tweeting from uh, from current pay per views. Uh, so yeah, check us out on Twitter. Um, and you'll, you'll get some commentary from us on, on Facebook, obviously if, uh, find us on Patreon, all that jazz, uh, and we, we very much appreciate your support. Thank you for liking us, even if it's one person or 50, you know, 50 people, a few hundred, we appreciate everything, uh, and thank you so much for watching. Uh, keep it gay. Oh, wrong thing. What did you do? I did that. It's okay. 
I think it's because you said okay. Do it again. That's so, okay. No, keep it gay. Keep it gay. Keep it gay.